All right. So today's video is going to focus on composition functions. It's um, specifically evaluating uh, composition uh, functions when we're given tables. So this problem tells us to use the tables for f of x and g of x. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these tables to find f of g of 3, and then we're going to find g of f of 3. So first, hopefully you are somewhat familiar with composition functions. Um, you've probably seen them um, in some sense before. Um, and I'm going to backtrack just a little bit, making sure that we do understand how to evaluate an input into a function. So most people have seen a, an equation in function notation. I'm going to write a very simple equation here. f of x is equal to x plus 3. So if I told you to find f of 3, what that's telling you to do is it's telling you to take 3 and plug it into x into your equation. So for this particular equation, here's my x, and instead of x, I'm going to input 3, and then I'm going to keep writing the rest of the equation. Now, this gives me an equation of 3 plus 3, which I can definitely calculate, and I can get 6. What this tells me is that when my x value is 3, I'm going to get 6, which actually represents your y value. So this would represent the point 3, 6. When you put in a 3 for x, you get a 6 for y. So that's what that tells us to do. So what our specific question is asking us to do is just a little bit further than that. We're finding f of g of x. So when we do this kind of problem, where we kind of start backwards. We kind of go from the right and go to the left. So we're going to start with finding g of 3. So f of g of 3, what that's asking us to do is it wants us to find g of 3, and the answer for g of 3 is what we're going to plug into f of x. So we do the g first, then we do the f. Now, what that actually looks like. So again, we're going to start with g. Um, you know, they, the f is first, the g is second, but we always start with the second thing when it comes to these composition functions. So we're going to find g of 3 first. So if I take a look at the tables here, this bottom table is my g of x table. So essentially, the top row here is my x values. The bottom row is my y values. So it's saying when x is 1, y is 3. When x is 3, y is 5 and so on. So my specific question says g of 3. So I'm going to find 3 on the x values, and it says when I put in 3 for x, I get 5 for y. So what that tells me is that g of 3 is 5. It's the y value when x is 3 for the g function is all that means. All right? So since g of 3 is 5, um, what we're going to find now is the f part. So this g of 3 right here equals to 5. So now we need to find f of 5 to wrap up the problem. So now we're going to move up to our top table here. And now we're looking for when the x value is 5, what is the y value? So again, the top row is our x values, bottom row is our y value. So we're going to look when x is 5, and it says when x is 5, y is 1. So what that tells us is that f of, f of g of 3 is going to equal to 1 for this one. So find g of 3 first, and then use that answer to find f of that. So we're going to do the same thing with example b. Notice that example b is g of f of 3. So again, we start backwards. We start from right to left. So the first thing we're going to do is find f of 3. We're going to get the answer for that and then plug that into g. So f of 3, so our f function is the top one. And again, it's, this is telling us when x is 3 for f of x, what is the y? So f of x is the top one, and my x value when it's 3 is right over here. And when it's 3, my y value is 7. So f of 3 is 7. So now all we need to do is find g of 7. So go down to the bottom table that pertains to g, and g of 7. So when the x value is 7, what is the y value? So the top row is your x value, so 7 is over here at the end. And it says when x is 7, y is 8. So that tells me that g of f of 3 is equal to 8. That's how composition functions work when you're given a table. Otherwise, that's it for this video.